Now that the light side of the rocks are painted, we'll put in the shadows. Mix up a large quantity of Payne's gray, that's cobalt blue and ivory black, and make it mostly blue. Load up a half inch flat brush with Payne's gray and dab the brush into a paper towel to remove the excess water. Now hold the brush almost level to the paper and scrape the brush on its side for a dry brush technique. When painting rocks, you'll want edges here and there that are broken up and appear rock-like. That's why I'm using a relatively dry brush and scraping it along the top fibers of the paper. We'll mass in most of these shadows using cobalt blue and ivory black. At some point, before the paint's gray color dries, take a little cadmium red and scarlet and drop that color into the shadow for a reflected lighter plane. Don't overdo this warmer color. We want the shadow to be predominantly cool with smaller areas of warm color. Put in some of the smaller shaped shadows, fissures and cracks along the top planes of the rocks. Before our shadows completely dry, we'll put in a few soft edges or half tones along the edges of the shadows. Load up a number six round brush with clean water and soften these edges that face the sun. Just touch the edges of the shadow, but don't put any water way inside of the shadow. Leave all the other edges hard. Now put in the next grouping of shadows using the cobalt blue. Squint at the reference photo often to see these shapes simply and put in the major groupings first. I'm making this shadow a little bluer than gray for a slight variation of color. Work quickly but carefully, really concentrate on your shapes. The more irregular and broken up they look, the better.
fill in this large shadow quickly and solidly, but make the outer edges more ragged looking. For the most part, these rocks have been sitting in the water for thousands of years and they have a rounded form from the constant beating of the waves. But they may also be cracked and split from ice erosion and violent weather. Therefore, most of the rocks will be rounded and curvy, but others can be square and angular. Now that most of the shadow has been put in, and while the wash is still wet, let's put in some warmer tones using some cadmium scarlet and cadmium orange here and there. Unfortunately, when we use the dry brush and scraping techniques, tiny droplets of color splatter all over the place. Use a Kleenex to quickly dab these up before they dry and become a permanent blemish in your painting. Although I'm working on this big shadow, I've got one eye on the edges of the shadow that I've already put in. I don't want those to dry before I get a chance to put in a few soft edges or half tones here and there. Again, put in a few warmer tones within this predominantly cool shadow for a reflected plane and color. Now that this large shadow has been put in, take a number six round brush loaded with clean water and make a few half tones on the edges of the shadow that face the sunlight. Soften as many of these edges as you can before it completely dries. Once all the half tones are finished here, continue putting in the next group of shadows on the rocks. Again, we use the Payne's gray color, mostly cobalt blue with a little bit of ivory black.
scrape a half inch or a quarter inch flat brush on its side to generate a broken edge for the shadow sides. The ledges in these rock forms conveniently angle to the right. It adds a nice compositional element to the picture. In this area, because of our first wash, it's hard to tell where the rocks end and the sky begins. That's a lost edge, and that's a good thing. Now with the addition of some shadows, we'll create a few found edges.